Thanks everyone for joining today. I'm Jen Witness and I'm um, the president of the Connecticut Conference of Independent Colleges. So I work with all the independent colleges in Connecticut um, around government relations and other things, you know, tied to state work and priorities. Um, so thanks for being here. I've been working with the New England Board of Higher Ed and the Business Higher Ed Forum for a while now to try and get this program launched. So we're excited that the day is finally here. Um, but Carol, Laura, and Maria, would you mind just quickly um, introducing yourselves? And then as the speakers go through, they can introduce themselves as they're presenting. Um, Carol, would you mind just letting us know like what role you play and, and what institution you're from? You're at, you are addressing me, Carol Dar. Yeah, Carol Dar. Thanks. <laughs> yes, I am um, with Trinity College. Oh, great. And right now I'm the interim director for the grants office. And we are very interested in incorporating technology into our liberal arts programs. Thanks, Carol. Um, Laura, you wanna go ahead? Are you sure? Um, I'm Laura Martineau. I am the grants development officer from the University of St. Joseph. And Maria Gomes. Hi, I'm Maria Gomes and I work for the University of Bridgeport. I'm the director of grants. Great, thanks. And I know we have interest from others, but some of the, because of the tight time frame, I think some folks had a hard time getting people on the call today. So thanks to Nebi and Behaf for um, recording um, and we'll get it out to everyone else. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sheridan, uh, maybe to move things along. Perfect, thank you so much, Jen. And I will turn it right back to Stafford who's going to walk us through a little bit about uh, the agenda today. Well, I've been wanting to say this for a while. <clears throat> so welcome to our soiree. And so, um, however, I have a vac, I'm gonna, oh, there we go, okay, it stopped. I had a vacuum cleaner in the background. So I apologize for that. Um, so welcome to our informational session. And we're really gonna focus in on uh, this innovative, innovation challenge um, that, uh, we've been supported by the Connecticut Office of Workforce Strategy, um, and we, meaning uh, the New England Board of Higher Education and BHEF, um, um, which is the uh, Business Higher Education Forum, are really, uh, we're partners in crime and, and one in developing the proposal um, to provide the resources to you. Uh, our goal here is to walk you through um, the RFP and the, and the materials we've put together to support the RFP. Um, so that's our charge. Uh, Sheridan Miller and myself, Stafford Pete from the Northern Board of Higher Education. We're going to take a piece of this presentation. Um, and, uh, but our colleagues from BHEF, um, uh, Brian Fitzgerald, as well as Frank Avery, are also going to take a section of this session. Um, as we've noted before, we're going to record it. We'll make it available to you. And I suspect we're going to be done uh, before 2 o'clock. I know we're scheduled to 2.15, um, but I think we can move through this fairly quickly. Um, so next slide. Um, about BHEF and it. I'm gonna leave that to you, Brian. Uh, that will be your transition. And about the New England Board of Higher Education, well, we're uh, one of four regional compacts across the country. And we really have worked with state legislators, uh, institutional leaders, both public and independent. Um, we're also a policy arm as well as an innovative project arm. I think this particular project falls under that latter category. Um, and our goal really is to develop um, and strengthen the relationship between higher education and economic well-being well -being in New England. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn this over to, uh, to, to, um, to Brian, maybe who could talk a little bit about what BHEF is and, uh, and then introduce uh, the, the sense of urgency we have about this particular RFP.
thank you. And um, uh, thanks to everyone for, for coming today. This has been a long time coming. Uh, as I want to pick up a theme that uh, Jen articulated and thank her for her partnership. Um, Jen and uh, our colleagues at NEBI and here at BHEF have been really at work for three years uh, trying to better understand the, the needs of the state um, and beginning uh, with a, a grant uh, BHEF won in 2020 uh, from the ECMC Foundation. Uh, we developed the, or launched the Digital Talent Ecosystem Initiative to begin to address uh, a growing skills gap by embedding industry validated foundational digital knowledge, skills, and abilities into community college curricula through the uh, Connecticut College of Technology. Um, this helped us along with the state's investment in, in, uh, to other partners to establish strong pathways into entry-level jobs requiring tech skills. Nevertheless, the demand for tech, uh, tech talent continues to grow exponentially. Um, in particular, the need for talent with, is with skills in upper level cloud computing, advanced skills in cybersecurity, data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. That level of, of skill demand continues to grow. Um, uh, in recent data, Connecticut has posted um, 93% more tech jobs compared to the same period last year. 88% um, of, of those jobs that list an educational requirement include the requirement or preference for bachelor's degree. Um, and the demand for high tech skills is accelerating and higher ed partners really have a unique opportunity to help close the skills gap. This past month in collaboration with the Connecticut uh, Office of Workforce Strategies, NEVI and BHEF have partnered to launch the Tech Talent Accelerator, which will help close the skills gap by increasing the available, availability of industry recognized and industry aligned credentials in Connecticut's public and independent uh, institutions. Um, and we'll do that by launching new high performing business higher education partnerships. Our role will be to to partner to secure jobs and skill needs from business in these high skill areas, translate jobs and skill needs into knowledge, skills, ability, or competency maps, and to <clears throat> issue innovative innovation grants to higher ed, uh, ed, ed institutions to develop credentials and pathways to meet business needs by embedding industry recognized credentials from global providers like AWS, Google and, and IBM, uh, those are all BHEF members, into the curriculum for credit, creating new industry-aligned credentials and pathways tailored to regional business needs within the state, and creating stackable credentials and credential pathways to uh, accelerate uh, student transfers to independent institutions. Um, through this, we'll provide technical support to CIC institutions, to translate industry skills into actionable solutions offered by your institution, to build direct high performing relationships with businesses across Connecticut, increase the number of transfers into your institution and create replicable scalable models your institution can apply to other high demand occupations and sectors like healthcare and advanced manufacturing. Uh, with that, I will turn it back to uh, our NEVI colleagues to walk you through the logistics of the integrate innovation grant application and award process. Take it away. Okay, thanks, Brian. So we have set up, I don't know how many of you have actually looked at the site yet. Uh, hopefully you have. Um, but our resources um, to support this particular RFP are um, all on this web page. Um, so the web page includes the RFP, the grant application, the events, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, FAQs. Uh, so we have three uh, questions so far on the, on the RFP, and we have responses to those three questions. Um, resources. We've cobbled together resources, I think, which would be helpful in you submitting uh, your grant application. Uh, 
and uh, they're in the RFP. Um, and finally, we released a press release um, last Friday uh, about this initiative. Um, what's unique about this particular web um, page is that you can submit your application right from this page. Um, and it's intended to be um, a drag and drop um, and we'll go through the, the sections of the application itself that need to be dragged and dropped. Um, so um, I think, Sheridan, next, next slide, please. So um, I, I, I think most of you have, um, would have had the chance to look at the, uh, at the RFP and the timelines and the award criteria um, I want to spend a little bit of time about the grant timelines. Um, the, 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 the grants are due um, on the 23rd of March, if I remember correctly. Um, um, actually, they're due the 18th. You'd be five days late. So they're, they're due on the 18th. Um, and the awards will be made by... Uh, both the New England Board of Higher Education and BHEF um, on, on the 1st of April. Um, so the forms I mentioned earlier, um, and the forms include uh, your narrative up to five pages, um, a budget, your proposed budget, and we have included a budget template for you to fill out, uh, a budget narrative and a timeline. Um, and those are the components of the, um, of the RFP response. And um, so I think perhaps we can go to the next slide, Sheridan. So how much is available? Uh, $180,000 and, and those resources are going to independent institutions. We're gonna fund hopefully um, um, at least six uh, grant applications, uh, possibly more, but right now we're thinking up to six grant applications for $30,000 each. Um, and what our grants are geared towards is uh, providing resources in order to uh, both plan and implement um, your project after uh, the grants have been awarded. Uh, so we built in a significant planning element. Um, and as you go through the RFP, you can see the questions that we've posed around planning. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I, I think just uh, we wanted to provide you what the grants could be used for. Um, and they include faculty stipends, um, uh, they include uh, staffing, if you need staff, um, project travel, qualified consultants, um, and certainly support uh, for faculty or staff to attend professional, de professional development related uh, activities. Um, the, whatever costs that are associated with that are not on the, this list or not on this list, uh, please let us know um, if you have another cost, if you think it's, um, if it's sort of outside the, the parameters of, uh, of, of this funding list, uh, just let us know and uh, we can give you a green light uh, for that expenditure. So, or that planned expenditure. So next slide, please. Okay. Um, so what we're looking for is a clear statement uh, in terms of the award criteria, a clear statement of proposed measures and outcomes and impact. Uh, who the target audience is. Um, I think we heard uh, a little bit from Trinity about it was gonna be focused in on students who are majoring in liberal arts. Um, so that, that's, you know, perfectly appropriate for this RFP. Um, and 
We also want to take into consideration accessibility and affordability as part of our award criteria. Uh, I have two more that I'd like to share with you on the next slide. Um, the estimated number of enrolled participants and the speed to market uh, or timeliness to the project implementation. Once again, um, there is up to, I think, six months of planning uh, that we've built in. And, um, and this would be, your, your time frame would all be uh, uh, made clear, I think, in the, the, the timeline you're gonna be submitting along with your, your grant applications. I think uh, Brian talked a little bit about this earlier, um, but there's two basic priorities. Um, we're focusing on the development of uh, short-term credentials and certificate programs, uh, uh, focused on providing in-demand in skills aligned with tech-enabled jobs. And the second priority is um, to embed high-demand industry-recognized credentials um, into uh, your program. And, um, and then the other option within priority two is to embed uh, industry validated knowledge, skills, and abilities into credential and degree programs. Um, I think part of both one and two is, and I, I, think, I believe that Brian mentioned this earlier, is about developing pathways and the pathways are, would be from a community college to your four-year institution. Some of you uh, may be familiar with your, um, your institution's participation in the Connecticut Transfer Guarantee, I, uh, with the exception, I, I believe, of Trinity. Um, and this is really about developing that, that pathway that starts as early as as the first year in a, in a student's community college experience. Um, so we wanna have you take that into consideration in both of these priorities. And next slide, please. Okay. Now, I, I can jump in and take this um, if that works for you. It certainly does. Okay. Um, hi again, my name is Sheridan Miller. I'm here with Nebby. And I just wanna walk everyone through some next steps and resources. So as Stafford mentioned, the RFP is due on March 18th. And that can be again, submitted through the portal that we um, talked through at the very beginning of this meeting. Um, and again, I dropped the address to that website in the chat, but it is nebby.org slash TTA. So you can complete the RFP on a separate document and then drag and drop it into that specific portal. Um, one of the supports and resources that we provide throughout this process is just being here to answer any and all questions you might have as you fill out the RFP. Uh, we are certainly just a phone call or an email away. So as you're working your way through this RFP, if you have any specific questions, any general questions, please feel free to reach out. Our contact information is included on the last slide um, and we will be following up with these slides. So you can um, view that there. And then it's also on uh, the RFP submission portal as well. So please feel free to uh, reach out with any strategic or tactical support or any questions you might have there. Um, we are also planning on hosting a few webinars going forward on case studies and best practices. We don't have a specific date in mind yet. However, those will be happening um, sometime in March. So keep your eyes out for that. And I think our BHEF colleagues can speak a little bit to that as well. Um, so those are kind of the next steps that you should be uh, mindful of. The other thing I just want to mention is that one of the other ways that we can support you throughout this process, both while you're filling out the RFP and then later should you be awarded a grant, is that we are here to provide unique labor market data. So um, we're happy to provide you with targeted reports 
we are working in MZ and Burning Glass right now and can provide data on anything from regional job posting data, uh, the top qualifications in these tech-enabled fields, um, the hard and soft skills required by top, top tech employers in Connecticut, um, accepted and suggested, suggested, excuse me, credentials and certificates, wages, education, and so much more. We also provided, as you work your way through the RFP, you'll see that we provided a general um, MZ report that goes over kind of all of these aforementioned uh, metrics for the entire state from a general perspective, but we're also happy to uh, run specific data polls for you and any of these um, indicators. And we're also happy to format them um, as palatable briefs or one pagers that you can share with your colleagues should you be awarded a grant. So I think that is kind of what we want to cover on the NEBI side. And I will, I'm more than happy to pass it over to our friends at BHEF. Um, Frank, if you want to talk a little bit about some connections to tech-enabled businesses. Sure. Thanks, Sheridan. And uh, thank you all. Nice to meet many of you. Uh, my name is Frank Avery. I'm our Director of Regional Init Initiatives at the Business Higher Education Forum and excited to lead our role here of helping to engage businesses in this initiative and help to translate their needs and create some systems and connections that help make sure that you all are able to produce some competitive, exciting proposals that prepare your students for success. Uh, so the way that Tech Talent Accelerator has been designed in partnership with the Office of Workforce Strategies in Connecticut was to help channel businesses your way uh, in a couple of different ways. Uh, number one, as many of you may be aware, but if you're not happy to talk more about that, the state has established a regional sector partnership strategy where they have established uh, across the state's various regions uh, venues for uh, business leaders and executives to engage around their talent and skills needs. And what Tech Talent Accelerator does is embed our team into those regional sector partnerships so that we are directly engaging with those C-suite executives representing those regional skills and jobs needs and helping to create those connections and opportunities to uh, connect you all to their leadership. And we'll talk a little bit more in a moment about what those connections actually look like. A second and newer opportunity that we're very excited to also bring to the table is uh, that the Business Roundtable. Uh, and if those of you who aren't familiar with it, the Business Roundtable is the major association of chief executive officers of some of America's leading companies such as uh, Stanley Black & Decker, Accenture, Synchrony Bank, Sigma, and so on, many of which have uh, a major presence or a headquarters in your state. Uh, they have incorporated the state of Connecticut into as part of their national network of workforce partnership initiative sites, meaning that uh, these are businesses where CEOs of some of the nation's largest firms are going to be directly committing their businesses to the success of these programs and grants, meaning that you'll be able to now kind of connect that grassroots and grass tops area where the grassroots folks uh, represent maybe those regional talent managers, senior executives that uh, lead Hartford offices, for example, they will now have the backing and support and, um, and um, motivation from their C-suite leadership at each of their corporations to ensure that they're participating in a way that is meaningful, actionable, meets their talent needs and benefits the broader workforce in the region. So this in mind, as, uh, as, there, as Debbie's been sharing the information on the proposal development process and then the subsequent uh, grant awards, what our role will be in helping uh, to get these proposals designed and off the ground will be one, helping to align the executive champions of these organizations to make sure that they are coming to the table with a common objective, a sense of what skills or jobs need that they have uh, in alignment with some of the broader uh, data, data, and labor, data and labor market analysis that we've done. Number two, we're going to help make sure that they are identifying talent needs and developing priorities around those talent needs so that you all are getting clear signals from them on what their needs are today, long term, and what their expectations on the industry or business side would look like. We then want to make sure that we're able to foster some leadership and executive connections for you all so that whether it's you or the C-suite folks at your respective institutions, that you're developing those relationships with these partners that will sustain ideally long beyond these grant periods. Moreover, then we want to make sure that for any uh, pathway credential development work, that if you need the subject matter expertise of individuals that are out in the field for these tech or tech aligned credentials, certificates, jobs, and so on, that we are bringing to the table the actual uh, experts and subject matter experts in these firms to participate and directly engage with faculty and staff at your organization. And then lastly, as part of our role, what we'll be doing is as we are establishing these priorities with the individual businesses, groups of businesses, cohorts of businesses across the state, 
will help to identify common areas of need and develop competency frameworks, KSA maps, and so on that you all can take back to your institutions so that faculty can do things like curriculum mapping, analyze and cross-reference existing coursework experiences and so on to make sure that the competencies needed by business are reflected in the curriculum. And then anything you need from there in terms of filling gaps, as Sheridan had mentioned earlier, of um, an industry recognized credential from a tech provider, we're here to bring those folks to the table to you to help make sure you can uh, you have what you need to do the work to embed that. Or if there's a new credential that needs to be developed and you're interested in partnering with one of them to maybe do a quote unquote 201 level version of an entry level credential, we can bring both the industry partner that may be doing the hiring and then perhaps an industry recognized credential provider, a Google, an IBM, an AWS, bringing them to the table to help co work with, to help work collabor collaboratively with you all to start designing out what those future or new potential credentials look like that help meet that need, align with demand, and set up your students for long term success and positive uh, growth in the workforce as they leave your institution. So I'll pause there. Um, if there's anything else that you guys are, would like me to cover, happy to. Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to Sheridan so we can move on. Great. Thank you so much, Frank. And um, we just have one or two more slides and then we'll pause for any questions uh, you all have. So I think. Oh, no, here we are. We are at the end. Um, so I think now is our time to turn it back over to you. And I think one of the one of the best things that we can ask you all right now is start with a question. How can we best support you going forward? Um, and if any of you in this conversation have any suggestions um, or if you just want to ask us questions, we are willing and able to answer those now. Can you stop the share screen so we can see everyone a little easier, Sheridan? I can, yes. Thanks. Um, I have a question, and sorry if to jump the gun for the participating institutions, but Frank, sort of how the all the resources that you outlined um, in terms of connecting institutions with companies to sort of inform the programs that they're doing, how was that going to work timing wise, right? Like, so if they're supposed to put their applications in in the next month, um, how do you visualize that sort of playing itself out? Sure. So um, we have a few immediate connections through the regional sector partnerships. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, the partnerships are just getting off the ground. And so some of them are more formalized. They have a venue moving. Uh, so for Hartford, for example, already has a set of champions available that are interested and have expressed an interest in moving forward with higher education partnerships. From there, we can facilitate any kind of individualized um, conversations between the two. So if you're in an exploratory stage or have a sense of kind of a, a broad concept or idea and it lines up well with for example, um, kind of labor market trends in the region, or even anecdotally something you may have heard from your faculty or leadership at your institution, uh, reach out to us and what we can do is help, um, we can help bridge that gap between the businesses that are available. A lot of it right now is informal connections. So we um, simply would just reach out directly to Cigna in coordination with the Capital Area Tech Partnership and help develop a conversation there. I think in light of the uh, kind of mid-March deadline, which is a pretty fast turnaround, I think I get where you're going with the question there. My recommendation would be the focus is on preliminary concepts. The grants are designed to fund planning and implementation. So if you have a concept or an idea, the grant is designed to help explore that concept with an industry partner. And then as that evolves and moves into the next phase, you can then use that for the actual adjustments on the implementation side to make sure it lines up. Does that make sense or answer the question you were asking, John? Yeah, and I just, I think for Carol, I think Carol, you said you're from Trinity, right? and Laura's at USJ, you know, I know that it would be really helpful not to speak for you, but like, I know, I know those institutions aren't actively involved in the Hartford Tech Partnership yet, because I've heard that there's no really higher ed partners, like really engaged other than the community colleges. So, you know, you know, and you and, and Carol, you know, I know you guys are doing a lot in this work with Infosys already, and Infosys is leading this tech partnership in Hartford. So, you know, in terms of just sort of aligning things up front like it could help just to like frank you know just to sort of initiate that you know just to get in touch with jeff ocker and just you know it would be helpful to just have a sense of what they're looking for i think you know for these two schools over here and then um you know sherry's from ub maria i know i think he's from goodwin and goodwin's also on the phone maria um with goodwin as well so you know just in terms of folks that are already here it'd be great to get a sense um what Hartford's up to. And we had a call with John Winkler from 
the Stanford partnership, which is that's sort of the other, the Stanford area that has the regional sector partnership and Elena Sherry is involved with that, um, Elena Cahill at UB. So, you know, I think there's some relationships down there a little bit, um, but you know, anything you could do to make connect the dots would be great. Yeah, and um, they've all been briefed over the past month and are ready to go to be responsive on their side while they're in right. the sort of ramping up phase. Go ahead, I cut someone off, apologies. Sorry, it was Maria. So, <laughs> uh, yes, I'm with Goodwin and also with the University of Bridgeport. And that was sort of my question is, you know, working down here in Southern Connecticut is how to, can we form some of those connections? Um, because, you know, our School of Engineering Education Business, you know, we do, we're doing a lot of those things. Like we just implemented a master's um, in artificial intelligence. So we want to do, you know, we're doing those innovative things. How can we find those partners to be able to um, submit an application? Yes, yeah, so Mar Maria, um, Elena Cahill is involved with the, the um, regional sector partnership, I believe, down there. Um, but I think Frank would be a great resource for maybe you and Maria and Elena and Sherry to, to get connected um, to talk a little further. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. And I think Maureen, it helps for a, go ahead, Frank. I was gonna say, I think if it helps for a very simple action item, if you're already working on something with a business partner and you think it may be a concept, I would say go ahead and throw us on an email chain and we can get together and kind of a briefing conversation to explore what that could look like to help maximize the opportunity there. So it's, I think that'd be a great use of time. And that's what we're here for over the next uh, few weeks as this moves into the application phase. Frank, Maureen McCarthy, I think you know, is here from Quinnipiac. Maureen, did you have a question? Hey, hey everybody. I'm so sorry. I just started to, to, to join late. I, I'm hiring someone to help me. So it's very oh. exciting. <laughs> good, good luck. <laughs> I know. So we'll, we'll see. But um, so I had, to, I had an interview. But um, so I yeah, no, I, I I don't have a specific question. I just wanted to to say hi and um and to apologize and um you know let let me know what I missed. <laughs> well, nice, nice well, to see you, Maureen. I think just uh, to reiterate, we we will be following up with all of these slides, and they're pretty comprehensive. So it, they kind of walk through um the RFP process and kind of the the regional sector partnerships as well. Um, I think the, the biggest note to take is just where you can find the RFP. Um, and that's in the chat, it's nevi.org slash TTA. And on that online submission portal, we have you know some background, we have the actual RFP, we have the grant application portal where you'll actually be submitting the grant, uh, or excuse me, the RFP, um, as well as FAQs and resources, so. So I think also, Maureen, if, if you have an idea, um, or that would apply to Carol or Laura, or certainly Sherry or Maria, if you have an idea, you want to shop the idea, then, um, then please do that with, with Frank and Sheridan and myself. Um, I think uh, we're, we're interested in innovation, uh, hence the name. Um, so if you have a really cool idea, we'd love to hear about it. And then we'd love to be able to figure out how we can best support you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we've been at Quinnipiac, we've obviously been thinking about this and working on this for a little while. And Jen and Frank have been in some conversations, but um, yeah, I want to I want to make sure that I read I want to read the RFP <laughs> first. And then, <laughs> This will be in this is recorded, Maureen, so we can send you the recording too. Great. Yeah. You haven't um, and missed the reason, anything then. And the reason Maureen has a little more insight is because Quinnipiac is the only Connecticut member of the Business Higher Ed Forum. So they've sort of been talking with uh, Brian and Frank. Carol, did you have a question? Sorry to. I do. Um, for the, um, the corporations that are looking for partnerships, what are they, what are they looking what type of a partnership are they looking for? Are they, you know, just want to advise what their tech needs are? Are they looking to be speakers? Um, what exactly do they want? Or do they just want a pipeline of students going to their, to apply for jobs at their companies? Number one, it's all of the above. Um, but to help provide a little bit more specificity here, um, 
it's going to vary depending on the different types of business institutions that are engaged. Um, some of them are very interested in very, very high levels of engagement. So um, as an example, in some of the preceding work that led to this prior to the development of Tech Talent Accelerator, um, we've done some work with Pitney Bowes, for example, in Southwest Connecticut, where um, they are involved at pretty much all levels. They want a strong competitive pipeline of individuals coming out of the New York City market, Southern Connecticut, Central Connecticut. And so they view their role as a business partner to invest in the entire pipeline, co-developing curriculum, providing uh, subject matter experts to teach in the classroom if the college wants that, developing or providing mentorship programs for students to help provide that wraparound success and doing alignment of different kinds of on-ramps into internship or full-time work experiences for those that are prepared, have the skills and are ready. So the reason why this was designed with such a wide, with the number of awards that it was, if I think we're doing 12 total roughly, depending on how everything plays out with six going, uh, about half of those here dedicated to independent institutions. By, um, by doing that, we're trying to allow for some of that flexibility to make sure that the institutions and either an individual business or a consortium of businesses can define that strategy as part of this process, put together a scope of work that then implements it and then provide that support um, over the course of the grant and beyond. Okay. Did that make sense or answer the question? Yeah. I don't know yeah, why Sense you. came out with such a deep Southern accent there. I lived in South Carolina for six or seven months and uh, it came out of Sam. So <laughs> that was kind of weird. Anyways, glad that's on a recording forever. Any other questions you may have? Um, I, I have one. Um, I'm interested if there's, if you have in mind a specific breakout of funding for each priority area. Uh, in other words, are you planning to dedicate an equal amount to each or, and I'm, I recognize that that may depend on the number of proposals you get, but I'm just curious if you have a priority priority, I guess. Well, I if you have a priority priority, then you don't have a priority, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I think we're, we're looking for innovative projects within those two priorities. Um, I don't think we're, I think initially, uh, Laura, we, we talked about one or two um, grants in each of those priorities, but I, I think that, I think we're really looking more for um, um, an innovative approach uh, to either of addressing either of those. Okay. Also, I, I think or, I mentioned- sure, oh, As you can say, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the priority, it doesn't necessarily have to be either or as well. It can be a combination of them as well. It's just kind of like the way to, yeah. a direction for the use of funds. Yeah, it, it could be. You could, you could definitely apply and uh, incorporate both priorities. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks, thanks Frank, for- for that. Do you have a question, Laura? I think I actually spoke over I, I did have one sure. more. Um, I, I was curious. Um, I, I think I missed this when Sheridan was speaking about it. I'm sorry. Um, you mentioned other RFPs on best practices and such. Um, how are you notifying folks uh, about when those are going to be? Oh, so um, I think I mentioned webinars and uh, potential breakout sessions. And that would be a part of uh, kind of this, this grant process. So we have right. been thinking about um, hosting kind of informational sessions with businesses or about uh, specific certificates or badges. Um, and those would be kind of over the course of the grant with our first kind of session, um, which is still in the works, being developed for hopefully mid-March. Okay, okay. So this is part of the grant. This isn't part of the application process? Yes. I, correct okay. me if I'm wrong. Gotcha. We, our plan is to offer at least one or two, uh, depending on scheduling availability, we're trying to offer one or two kind of master classes in advance of the submission deadline. Okay. Uh, so like okay. one of them, we think it might be like Northeastern Miami-Dade College and IBM is probably what we're looking at, where they've done this work of embedding IBM badges into degree pathways and certificates. Okay. So we're looking at bringing that to you guys in advance. We will definitely, over the course of the grant period, also be doing that. But we uh, we are hoping to bring something a little bit earlier as well to give you a little bit of a illustration of what these programs or projects can look like. Okay, and if you you're doing the earlier one, uh, will you send like out an email mailer to everybody who's on the conference, for instance? We're wrapping up the availability over the next okay. couple of days. Great. Should be on soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I have a really um, technical question, which is I'm in the RFP right now, and there's a couple of places where it says 
you know, click here to access the budget form and there's, it doesn't seem to be linked. Can you help with that? Yeah, we're, 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 we're. That, let's see, please complete. Oh, that will be corrected within the hour. <laughs> Great, <laughs> thank you. Thank Maureen, you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, can you keep clicking, Maureen, to see if anything else? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll make sure. <laughs> it looks like the it looks like the budget form. Were you talking about the budget form? Okay. Yeah, I I will upload that. Any other questions? Well, absent additional questions, then I think we'll have to, we will wish you a fun afternoon. And Jen, thanks again for hosting us. Um, uh, you, the information I think we've talked about, you will, you will see. Um, you'll either get contacted via email. Uh, for the most part, it will be th through email and what is available now, including the recording. Um, and that technical assistance session that we that Frank talked about, we're, we hopefully will be able to nail that down and get information to you out next week as well about that. Great, um, thanks guys. Go ahead, Jerry. One more thing, sorry. I, um, I just wanted to mention that there is that budget form that is missing from the, the RFP, which will be uploaded shortly, can also be found under the, um, the grant application page, Maureen. So if you want to click around in the, in the interim, you can find it there. Okay. Well, thank Thanks. you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.